Okay, so <laughs> if I under, if I understand right, um, Rod, we're, we're dealing with the cancer, and you've had it for years. But I've just always sort of thought I was a bad person. And what came out of that, she asked me a couple questions, and I said, uh, you know, my brother used to tell me I was a bad person. We were kids before my parents made enough money that we didn't share the same room. And um, he wasn't physically abusive, but he was psychologically much larger than I physically and psychologically um, he just decided he did not like the new kid in town. That was pretty clear. Um, so, and then I, uh, I'm shortening this quite a bit, but I had quite an experience. I found myself, uh, see if I can remember this correctly. I found myself pondering, do I need to forgive my brother? And, and, you know, not stupid, so yeah, um, but how? Um, calling him is not necessarily effective. I haven't talked to him in several years. Um, and so while I was thinking about it, all of a sudden I had a vision. And I was back at good old Menlo that uh, put that dent in your retirement fund. <laughs> and, um, and we won a soccer game. And, you know, we were just a little bitty soccer team, but we were playing in South San Francisco. And they were a big, big soccer team. And um, so it was, you know, uh, early on in my career, I was junior varsity. And uh, I wasn't really very good at it. Uh, football was my game. But uh, they were always short of people at Menlo to fill a team. And so I volunteered. And the French soccer coach looked at me and he, he said, we don't have a goalie. You want to be a goalie? I said, I'm not very, I don't even know how to play the game. I'll do whatever you tell me. So I became goalie and this, you know, much, much quicker, bigger athletes. This guy's passed all our forwards and he's just heading for the goal with the ball dribbling like a champion. And I figured, well, I'll just dive down in his feet and take the ball. And when I dove, and, and a little less so now, but then I was extremely conscious of peripheral details, excessively so. Um, and, and I saw what he was doing. Once he realized I was diving, he decided not to kick the ball, but kick me in the head. And he knocked me unconscious. And of course, back then, you know, about eight or nine minutes later, you're back up and we still don't have a goalie and the game's going on. So I just go back in and, and then the kid's coming again. Now let's just go to the vision because that's the real story. When the kid came again, he was fine. He did. We did not dance again. Um, he shot appropriately and uh, he did not try and kick me in the head. Um, so now I'm in the, the waking dream vision, wondering about forgiving my brother and what I need to forgive, you know, because it's internally with me. Um, and, and so there he was, he's coming at exact same scene. All, boom, I'm unconscious. And in the vision, he's coming at it again, just like before. But this time he, he, he has not backed off. And so I know he's going to kick me in the head again. And so when I, and I, of course, remember, I'm a lot bigger. Um, and so when I went for him, I didn't go for the ball. I went for his foot. I grabbed it, lifted him, cracked his ankle, snapped it. And I went, holy catfish, what did I just do? And, um, and then it was all gone. And it was like, you've been betrayed by men. And it just showed up. I don't trust men. I was totally unaware of that. Um, and it all started with my brother, you know, one of, he kind of, uh, he and his friends used to get together and play strip poker. And, you know, I'm three years younger, so I, you know, I don't know what strip poker is. And they kind of lure me in, Ey! and uh, they mess with me and um, they dress me up in some of mom's clothes and then they, they cheated with the cards, but I didn't know all this at the moment. And, and then they locked me outside the house and I was just terrified. And, you know, somebody would think, well, you're just terrified because you're locked outside the house. Uh, that puts you in your mother's shoes and whatnot. No, I felt betrayed. I didn't feel like I'd just been made into, you know, something too weird, just betrayed. And that has stayed with me all my life, apparently. And well, the, yeah. These things you're speaking of, these specific events you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Kicking the head, breaking the ankle, and 
betrayal and strip poker and all of that. <clears throat> um, you and Sonia have worked on those specific events? Well, in the first time we talked about them, and the second time we talked about them a bit. And I mean, I've, I've got, we, both of us, we've kind of fallen in love with Sonia. She is beautiful. Um, but um, this is only my thoughts. Uh, I, I, I think she's a little risk averse. I think she's so kind and loving that uh, she didn't want to rattle me. Like when I started telling her that story, she said, hey, it's okay. There's a lot of men that like to wear women's clothes and whatnot. And I said, that's okay with me, but that's not what I'm talking about. I'm, I'm five years old, six well, years old. And um, I'm going to rattle you, okay? Rattle me away. <laughs> that's what I like about you. You are, you, you have a big heart, but you also are smart enough to have guts. <laughs> well, <laughs> uh, all right. Enough. Now, what little I've spoken with uh, to Sonia, about the, apparently the cancer is continuing to evolve, getting worse. Am I hearing that right? Yes, for the first time in over four years, it's moving forward. And it's, it's not huge yet, but it's in sensitive spots, like at the, the right hip ball joint, the acetabulum. The actual joint, the tumors are now growing and and we talked to the radiologist last week, whom we really like and trust, by the way. And I'm not really always big on doctors. So, um, and he said, I, 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 I think your pain may be coming from that spot, even though you're feeling it in other spots. And he said, that's a less dangerous place to radiate than anywhere in your torso because of the peripheral damage. And he said, I can be pretty careful with that. And he said, you have two choices. You can try at this other place and get a proton beam, or you can just do it here. And there's probably about a 2 or 3% benefit to the other place, but there's a 99.9 .9 chance your insurance company will turn you down because of where it's located. So I said, okay, we'll go with you. So he's going to get back to us. He's now, okay. he's going over the slides. And so the pain started, I guess, about two weeks ago or so. The, the pain then, right hip area and the iliac crest and the sacrum, which is ground zero. I got tumors all over the place, but uh, ground zero. And then I have a even more severe pain in the back because I couldn't walk. Normally I get up in the morning and walk a mile. I couldn't walk a hundred yards the last two weeks. T today was the first day and I have been uh, taking all sorts of things. I have tramadol here, but I have not taken anything like that yet. Um, and, and I never have so far. So I don't okay. keep that. So that gives you an idea. And yeah, so the okay. muscle all around the body, I got all sorts of pain now just because I'm moving differently. So let me shift just a little bit. Okay. Absolutely. Um, I'm forgetting some of our previous conversations. So I, I want to, I want to ask you, this is a spiritual question first. Okay. Yes. In your belief system. And think about this before you answer, okay? I, I in, your will. Be, in your belief system, if God was sitting right next to you, could God fix the cancer? 100%? So, that's, a at, yes. that's a yes. Yeah, okay. I, I don't, I have not for the last 50 years had one second of question about that. All right. Now, so... The follow-up question to that is, well, if God could fix it, why hasn't he? God knows. I don't know. Well, but, yeah, but we want, to, we, want to, we want to examine that, don't we? Okay, sure. Because, because our unseen therapist is God, okay? Amen. All right. I, I, I'm, I'm a pretty huge fan of The Course of Miracles, which I know is part of your background. Huge. Okay. Fan. All right. So. Let's go back to some of the stuff. This is in the Course in Miracles as well, not stated the way I'm stating it, but it's also in our Optimal EFT course. Yes. And that's the idea of free will. Now, yeah. I, I want to go over that just so we're on the same page because I think it's going to be important in this conversation. All right. Okay. The essence of A Course in Miracles, by the way, as well as our course, 
our optimal EFT course is that each of us is ultimately far, far, far more powerful than we even remotely think, okay? As a result of that, we create our own diseases. We have the own remedy for them within us. God, unseen therapist, is part of us. But because we have free will, very important point for this conversation, because we have free will, you can believe whatever you want to believe, and the unseen therapist is not going to interfere with your right to believe whatever you want. If you want to believe, for example, you're a bad person. Okay. If you want to, if you want to believe you are a separated body. Okay. If you want to believe whatever you want to believe about betrayal and and how bad you are for breaking somebody's ankle or whatever the case may be. Okay. Well, that was a video. I didn't actually break it. Well, in real, it didn't happen. He backed off. Okay. All right. And so, think about my brother. This vision just popped into my brain. Okay. Maybe the same therapist. And this time, it was excuse the French, but F you. Boom. Crack. Yeah. Okay. And, um, All right. And you know, and I, I I felt pretty bad even seeing it, but it was well, a vision. And then right after that, voice in my head said, you don't trust men, you expect them to betray you. Okay. So if you have the belief that you don't trust men, you expect them to betray you, that is your right to believe it. An unseen therapist is not going to do a thing with that because to shift that belief, to change the belief for you without your permission, without your willingness, is like her saying, uh, you know, this belief you have there, you, you, you can't have that one. You got to have this one over here. Okay. I'm happy to get rid of it. I think half of it or more is already gone. Well, I just call it man. And, okay. You know, I pay for let's, let's talk about that. A little bit. Okay. Many of us are, at least academically speaking, at least on the surface speaking, happy to get rid of whatever these things are. We're happy to do it. Okay. Yeah. I want to, uh, underneath that, we need to explore a little bit. I want to explore with you some of this too. Let me, let me give you an example. Um, we do a lot of work in our course with resentments. Course in Miracles talks about them as well, you know, to a great extent. And so we want to forgive whatever we did or people did to us or whatever the thing is. We want to forgive all of that, and we want to be lighter about our resentments, and so on. Okay. Now, we've had a lot of success doing specific events that are resentment-related, bringing in unseen therapists, the resentment gets much better, etc. But there's an underlying thing about that, just to use this as, a, as an example. Guilt's another example, there's several examples, but we're gonna use resentment for the moment. There's an underlying level of that that we tend not to get to. And let me give you the, well, let me ask you first. I, I have a series on my, um, on my website called Stairway to Miracles. Have you read that series, do you recall? I'm not sure because okay. of the title. I have looked at a lot of your stuff on the okay. stairway to power. Well, I want to. I want to go over. I want to go over this. Even if you've read it, I want to go over it because it's important, absolutely important here. It has to do with forgiveness. All right, and it has to do with what I'm calling true forgiveness. Now, let me give you an example. Let's say. Some years ago, you steal something from you steal some money from me, okay? And so I'm mad at you. Mm. I don't, I don't like Rod. You stole my money, and you went off with it and did wine, women, and song and stuff I wouldn't agree with anyway. And you did a bad thing, and I don't like you, and I'll never like you. And go away, and don't even bother darkening my door. I'm, I resent you, mm. and I'm not about to forgive you. No way. All right, now, later on, you come up to me and you say, Gary, look, I'm sorry, I know. 
Listen, I stole from you. Uh, I was in a bad place. I wasn't thinking well. I, I, you know, you're guilty, yes. And I can't repay it all to you, but I could repay yourself. So here's some now, and I'm just hoping for forgiveness. Okay. All right. So I say, well, okay, Ron, let bygones be bygones. Let's you and I be friends. This is fine. Yeah, thanks for the partial payment. Let's go see a movie, you know, play cards, be friends. All right. Now, that seems like forgiveness, does it not? No. Oh, it doesn't? Uh -uh. <laughs> well, that's how we practice forgiveness typically in this world, yes? Yes. Well, let me go on with my story, and then if you want to add to it, do it, okay? Whatever you want, say, I'm in. Well, you, you tell me, why isn't that forgiveness? See if I can get the words. Um, it has too many things attached to it. Um, and they're subtle and they're invisible, potentially at least. And uh, there's all sorts of strings attached to it. Um, even the look on your face when you say, okay, I'll let bygones be bygones. And so basically what, what's, what's implied in all that is, I don't know, but I'm going to. And if this happens again, man, forget it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and so to me, forgiveness is done. Well, so, not only not only done, but literally forgotten because it's recognized it's within done within a dream that we are dreaming. The yes. whole thing isn't real. Your body's not real. Your cancer is not real and all of that. OK, neither is this conversation. It's all part of a dream it never even happened you never even stole anything from me okay because it's all done within a dream mm -hmm. but within the dream what we call forgiveness is well okay and this is an ego deal oh yeah i in my magnificence am going to forgive you 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 lowly person who stole from me okay and i i go i am going to give you Solace, I'm going to allow you to be in my presence. That's an ego deal, okay? And we're mm -hmm. going to be friends, okay? But you do it again, I'm keeping score and <laughs> heaven help you, okay? Not true forgiveness. Okay, so what I want to get, to, I want to get to something with all of that, okay? And that is we think, we think we have cleared the table on some things. When in reality, there's something big left over that we're not aware of. With me? Totally. Okay. So, let me hold on a second here. I want to make some assumptions here just to explore. Okay. Okay. And the reason I say there are assumptions is because what we're going to explore, perhaps, in your own recollection and your own memory or your own belief about things isn't really on point. Because I'm going to assume you are repressing it. You're not looking at it. It's under the surface and we want to go dig it out. Good. With me? Okay. All right. So I want to ask you a question. If you had life to live over again, what person or event, would you just as soon skip? Um, well, my brother. All right. Now, your brother was abusive to you. He didn't like you. You were the young child. You know, you were stealing his thunder. He was jealous. I got that right. Probably. I mean, I wasn't inside his head, but probably. All right. And his abuse was limited, but it, it came in such a way that it, it, it destroyed a lot of my trust, just totally destroyed it. And then it, I mean, they didn't ever punch me or anything. The first real fight we had, I, was, I just got invited to Alabama, so it was a one-way fight. Um, but And, and we, there never was a physical event after that, and that was actually the most aggressive physical event in our lives. And you know, I, I backed off for a few minutes, okay. hit me a few times, and I said, please stop. And then I just put them on the ground. Um, All right. 
but it didn't heal the relationship. It just changed the ground play. Yeah. And um, so, and he would go to school, um, you know, three grades ahead of me. And he would tell the kids and the teachers, my weirdo brother, blah, 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 blah. I mean, that was a tremendous exaggeration. I was different. That was pretty obvious. But the, the super weirdo, everything just wasn't true. Um, I did graduate president of the senior class at Menlo. I mean, I wasn't exactly obnoxious, um, but okay. but anyway, he had his own reasons, and um, he definitely, my interpretation of him definitely influenced my life a lot. Okay, what we want to get to, at least what I'm thinking so far, okay, is not what he did to you. It's your response to that. Now, you've already told me you don't trust men and so on. Okay. Yeah, I don't have any trouble trusting you right now at all. Well, okay, then. But then, okay. I, but you said before, I don't trust men. That's what you said. Okay. Yeah. Those are, yeah. Those are yeah. the words you used. Okay. So you generalized that. And, okay. Well, I, I, no, it would be there 10 years ago with you, too. A lot has happened in the last few years. All right. All right. Can't, well radically changed my life and right. it is very easy for me to love people male or female now all right yeah. well so there's something about your response to your brother okay whether you feel anger guilt whatever whatever it may be lack of trust it, and so on. Anger at that point towards my parents who were really very good people. But when they would leave, you know, back then you left kids at home. He, nobody called the police when the six year old was at home. Um, and, and so when they would get home, they say, how things go? Sometimes they'd say, well, you know, my brother locked me in the closet or something, whatever. And, uh, and they'd say, well, we weren't there. It's your word against his, his word. And so we, we can't make a decision. And my brother has very high IQ and, um, and um, so he played it perfectly. And so I, I, so I had the anger split towards my parents, which is very sad, um, the anger towards him. All right. There's something else that is deeper still about For sure. That. Okay. And, and that is, that, that's this. Yes, there's the, your response and you have some, labeled uh, emotions, anger, guilt, da, 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 like we talk about. But there's another one still that goes something like this. What does all of that mean to you about you? That's deeper. Mm -hmm. What does it mean to, does it mean uh, I don't count? I'm not lovable. I don't fit. There's something wrong with me. I'm a bad person. What does it mean to you about you? Now, but throughout most of my life, everything you just said. I, I, I didn't hear. You oh. said you, you say up I until do, now. Right now, I do not feel all that stuff. But over the last. 60 plus years. I, I every single thing you said, I felt. All right. I'm going to guess that while you have, you have, made, have done a, a lot of very valuable work on those issues, there's still a level of an undone. Okay. At a level maybe you're not able to access. Um, okay. Maybe you're completely unaware of it. <laughs> okay i'm not okay. sure on that well all right all right all right um but good possibility obviously or we okay would, well we're but... gonna we're gonna make that assumption and we're gonna we're gonna assume it's true all right now it, we, we may be going down a dead end but if we don't go down it it goes unexplored mm -hmm. are you with me totally all right uh, and you don't, you don't need it, but you have my permission to explore 
anything that comes in your mind, even if you have a vision while you're talking to me that I'm a reincarnation of Heinrich Himmler. If you feel it, you think it, I'm willing to look at it. I don't need your permission, my, my good man. <laughs> I know that. I'm just being... <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna, I, I, I'm, 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 I'm gonna hit you. I'm gonna hit you any way I can. Okay. Absolutely. All right. Now, from what little I've known of you, we've had conversations before, you and I, and, and Lisa sometimes, and so on. Okay. I come away with a perception. It's not a judgment. It's not a criticism. It's an observation. Okay. And that is, here's Rod, who is constantly telling me about how much he has improved things and, and so on. I've improved things, but only to a certain point. Not improved well, enough to make and, me satisfied, that's and, for sure. And what I keep hearing is that's a facade. It is, yeah. fo it is fooling you as well as the world around you. Agreed. Okay. And that's the thing underneath. And we all have facades. We're not criticizing you. Okay? Everybody's got a facade. Okay. It's part of how you get. It's part of how you get through this illusion. Bring it on. Bring it on. Okay. So, let's, let me for the moment go to. I'm a bad person for a second. What does bad person mean? Then I might wake up one morning and so filled with hate and rage that I'll just turn against the world and maybe become a psychopathic bad guy. Okay. A, a sort of Hitler. Yeah. Okay. So you recognize that somewhere within you is a Hitler possibility. I'm not sure if this is appropriate, but I have lived long enough to be aware that every single possibility I've ever encountered is potentially within me. Yeah, and I'm not of course. theologically, that's my experience. And that includes Hitler. Okay. Absolutely. Okay, Hitler, I'm going to be theoretical for the moment. Sure. Hitler is our, the world's primary example of the world's biggest villain. Okay, I mean, that's Hitler. Okay. On the other, other, other end of it is Mother Teresa. Okay, the world's most acknowledged angel, if you will. Okay. I like. Okay. Within each of us running around in this separated world and these seemingly separated walls of flesh. <laughs> Life, all those possibilities. Hitler enacted that extreme part of it. Mother Teresa enacted her other extreme part of it. The rest of us are in between enacting stuff, submerging stuff, and so on. Okay. So, and I've never done this before, Rod. So you and I are part of an experimental territory in a way. Oh, you like that? You like that? I like being a guinea pig. <laughs> I tried the. We'll see. Okay, so hold on a minute here. I've got to. Um, I'm trying to think of how to go about this. What I what I what I'm aiming at. I'm I'm trying to find a a metaphor or a way to get into this thing to. Not academically look at the Hitler possibility, the bad person within you, which I'm going to assume is a big contributor to cancer being a bad thing. Okay. Reasonable assumption. Okay. So you got it in there someplace and we want to go in and look at it, hopefully resolve it, or at least get started with a resolution of it and go that direction. And I'm not, I'm, I'm drawing a little bit of a blank right now about how to do that. Um, what comes to me is, is well, I'm, we're going to need to do an unseen therapist session on this for sure. But I think we need to do some discussion or reframing about it first. Okay. So as best you can, Rod, and get, getting, throwing the facade uh, away, I'm going to be talking to the Hitler in you, okay? And the thing for you to do, I think, is 
but we're going to, we're going to take your brother as an example, but maybe your parents are in this and maybe some other siblings and, or. No, I didn't have any other siblings. Or, well, or schoolmates or other people, somebody else could also be a candidate besides your brother. That's what I'm saying. Okay. Oh yeah, for sure. But let's, let's pick your brother for the moment. Okay. Hmm? He didn't like you. He <clears throat> rejected you. He, you're a weird, you're a weirdo, da 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 da, and stealing underneath, a, stealing attention, stealing his, attention, yeah, well, he's stealing attention, but more on point, is how you are responding to that. I'm angry about that. I'm gonna get the son of a bitch. Definitely. Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to grab him by the balls and rip him off. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to tear his ears off. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to Hitlerize him in some fashion. I'm going to hire six dentists and pull out all his teeth. And how am I doing? Well, keep going. I like well, it. That's me talking. I want you to talk. Um, I, I did intellectually consider that I might be better off with him dead. Mm -hmm. And um, and then I started thinking that about my parents, which really weirded me out. It didn't wear me out too much, but I thought about him. Um, and and I mean, I was pretty angry. You know, we we went up to summer camp together, one of those half summer summer camps. And um, he, you know, when he got there, he's older. You know, so I'm like six, he's like nine, and he just talked down talk to everybody about me you know not being nothing but trouble a bad guy blah 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 and he was just walking around telling the counselors and everything and then he walked up at least they didn't put us in the same bunkhouse and then he walked up to my bunkhouse the door opened it up and he told me what he'd been doing and i just went like this with a bowie knife and i'm just <laughs> right in the door frame next to him you mean that was that was a a real knife throw or imaginary real oh real okay so behind that is Every swear word in the book, I'm sorry I missed your head. I think I was kind of relieved I didn't hit his head, but I only half relieved. Okay. He deserved it. Felt like it at the time. Well, that's okay. Yeah. This felt like it at the time. That's a facade thing, okay? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Okay, let's do it. Keep going. We, we, we want to get right down, right down to it because we want to get down to that, that real rage, anger, because it's... See, let, let's go to Hitler for a second. Now, I'm not a great student of World War II and Hitler and all that, but I do know enough about him, or at least what's written and so on, that this was a man... Short in stature, by the way, not very tall. Okay, um, a a sort of a failed artist, but a man who was rejected, a man who was put down. Didn't like his height for one thing. Okay, you're, you're little. Okay, a man who was so angry inside about how he was pushed down by metaphorically his brother. Okay. You're mm -hmm. pushed down by your brother. I, I don't even know if he had a brother, okay? But metaphorically pushed down and his anger inside, which all of us have, we've already talked about that, was so intense that he had to lash out. He had to blame the Jewish people. We had to have the Aryan race. We had to have all the stuff that he did, but it was... Anger, 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 anger that was pushing all of this because he had to do something with that anger. And the way what most people do is they project it out. They have it inside here, but they project it out. Okay. How am I doing? Truth. All right. Yeah. Okay. So we're not excusing your Hitler thing. We're only, we're, what we're doing is understanding it. Okay. Mm -hmm. I've yes. got it. I've got it. And so does Lisa. Now she's listening to all this, right? Of course. Lisa, are you Hitler or not? I've got Hitler in me. Okay. Everybody <laughs> does if they will admit it. Oh. They don't want to admit it. I'm frighteningly aware of it. 
Okay. All right. And it may uh, be causing your cancer. Okay. And it may be keeping your cancer from healing. That's the point. All right. Now, Again, we're not sitting here criticizing it. We're recognizing it. That's what we're doing. That's the important thing, okay? But we also want to get down to it, okay, so we don't just dance around it. All right. Now, so you threw this knife. <laughs> thing. Good throw, by the way, because the knife stuck on the door and everything else. You, know? you, get, you get marks for that. You get marks for that, okay? But let's get down to the real why of that, the real why of that is, again, what does all, all of his abuses, if you will, mean to you about you? It means there's something wrong with you and all the stuff you think you've done better at. And I'm saying, nah, there's more underneath you. You're covering over or haven't gotten to yet. So where else have you had anger like that that you really don't want to admit? How about for Lisa? Be honest with Lisa. She ever really tweaked you someplace and you, <laughs> you wanted to do some nasties? I'm not sure I understand. It is likely when you're married, live together, etc., that you will conflict with your partner. Oh, it yeah. Happens, it happens. But I throw knives at her ever. Well, I, I, I'm talking about mentally. She does oh. something, said something or other, and it annoys you, and privately you go, oh, no, 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 you know. Yes. Okay. And if I said no, she would start talking. <laughs> well, it would okay. Every but member of has seen me, seen it in me. You, you remember what? Oh, every member of my family, my closest friends have all seen that in me. Okay. Well, they've seen it in you. They also have it in themselves. They just maybe masqueraded it better than you have. I, I hope so. All right. Well, there. all right. Uh, it was scary to me that I was so dangerous. And it wasn't in my head. I mean, I have hundreds of stories of attacks on the street, et cetera. And um, I went looking for trouble eventually. I drove around in high school with a police scanner. Um, Oh, because you would actually play this out. You would do other things. The, the knife throw was not an isolated incident. No. no. Well, I mean, it, it pretty much was. It, I mean, w w in that personalized context, it happened twice. And then, so that was like 1956. And so like 1967, somewhere around there, um, he came home from college. We won't say what college. Stanford. <laughs> Um, and, um, he wanted my, he wanted my car to go on a date. He didn't ask me. He just took the ticket. I mean, the keys. And, uh, and so I saw him and I said, Hey, and he said, Hey, I see you heading out. Yeah, I'm heading out. I mean, we talked fairly civilly most of the time. I said, yeah. I said, well, you don't have your car. He said, no, I'm taking yours. I said, you, 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 you need to ask me. And he said, no, I don't. And I said, well, I say you do. And so I say, give me the keys. And if you don't ask me, you can't go. He said, you and what army? I said, you can't be this stupid, my brother. We're not even in the same league anymore. And so he punched me. The only time he ever full punched me. They punched me again. I said, want to do it again? I mean, I had big, I didn't even feel it. Yeah. And then I was just, boom, once picked him up. And we lived in this French chateau with him the marble, you know, the big entrance with the chandelier and that kind of stuff, circular staircases. I just picked them up over thing, hung them over. I, I don't even know if I used both hands. And I said, give me a reason not to drop you. In which case my mother, who, she's got more balls than all of us put together. Um, and she, she's fearless. But in Hillsborough, every single house had a red button back then. You should, she just touched the button 90 seconds of the average annual Hillsborough response time. And in about 60 seconds, there were two cops at the door. I'd already pulled my brother back up, but I'd let him hit me a few times. And, my, and you know, he grabbed me by my shirt and tore it. I, I waited and waited and then just closed it. Yeah. Um, okay. And, and that's when I realized, oh, my God, if mother got spooked that I was going to drop him. Oh, oh, oh. 
Okay. Yeah. I felt kind of bad actually, but I, I didn't give him my car. Well, all right. That, good. Good. That, that's part of the facade, I'm sure too, but yeah, I was going to say that. I got it. I'm learning it quickly. The, the, the facade covers that over underneath all that is some unresolved stuff. Now, you son of a bitch, you ruined my life. Are you saying that to, to me or who? No, not to you, to him. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Now, be as graphic as you can here. This is going to be important. Okay. As graphic okay. as you can. Give me a picture of what this anger looks like. Is there fire? Is there war? War. Okay. Well, be more specific. What's in the war? Who's shooting who and with what kind of ammunition and, and how many bodies are flying and how bad it screams. And I mean, whatever you want to tell me about that. 30 or 40. Paint it. Paint it. Go ahead. Dead. Wait, 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 wait. I'm, you cut out a little bit. Start over. Okay. Uh, so a visual picture. Um, we're on patrol. And most of my, half my men get killed or wounded. And I get very, very angry. Well, is this actual or something you're making up? Oh, I'm making it up. But I've okay. been in All similar right. situations. All right. Go ahead. I, I have several times been in battles where the odds were more than six to one against me. Um, so... Um, I just get mad and I just kill them all. And that's well, pretty much okay, but that's not the picture I'm looking at. That's something you may have done, etc. What is the picture? I, 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 I was trying to. My mm -hmm. picture is one of fire. Okay, but you may have a different picture. I mean, make it an angry, ugly picture. What does it look like? I'm not sure if this is working. I'm going to try something, if I may. All right. Uh, and can you see a bigger version of me on your screen? Uh, reasonably. Okay. <clears throat> I'm going to demonstrate with my face what it feels like. May I? Uh-huh. All right. And what's going on inside of the, behind those eyes? I'm coming. You don't have a chance. I'm coming. You don't have a chance. All right. Okay. I am going to hurt you. All right. Now, I'm going to shift for a moment. Yes. We want to do a little reframing here. This is, this is all leading up to an unseen therapist session. We're trying to put as much on the table as we possibly can. Because she's mm -hmm. only going to deal with stuff that we're putting on the table that we're willing to let go of. Stuff that we've forgotten, repressed, don't want to look at. That's under the table, not touched. Okay. So let's look at your brother. You have some within the dream, some very obvious reasons for having resentments and angers and so on for all of his various behaviors, calling you weirdo and so on. Okay. Now, we're not going to excuse his behaviors. I'm not going to excuse them. No. Okay. We are going to make a step towards understanding them, not just academically, but understanding them in a release kind of way. Okay. So I'm not your brother. I've never met him. I don't know him. I wouldn't know him if he, if he walked up to me in the street and kicked me in the shins. I wouldn't know who he was. Okay. But I think I can speculate just with my experience. That Swan, when you he's very loving and kind to other people. It's extraordinary. His his facade. Yes. Okay. Right. All right. Okay. So fine. Okay. But you come along. Before you come along, before you come along, he's the only child. Mm -hmm. And I speak from knowledge because I'm the only child, period. Okay, <laughs> Nobody came along to steal my thunder and take my Christmas presents and everything else. Okay. I got it all. So, so yay. So I understand where your brother is coming from. Okay. And he, here comes, here comes that stupid little Roderick, you know, and he's getting attention and I'm not getting it. 
And I, like every other person, I, your brother, like every other person on the planet, want and seek love. You're doing it. He's doing it. I'm doing it. Lisa's doing it. Everybody's doing it. Okay. We're always looking for, we look for love outside of ourselves, by the way. That's a big mistake. Okay. Because everybody else is doing the same thing. Okay. But we're looking for love and you are stealing it in his perception. I believe that is true. Okay. So while we're not, again, going to excuse his behavior, wouldn't it be sort of natural, within the dream anyway, if someone's stealing your love that you're going to react against it? Yes. Put that little, that little so-and-so down? He's a weirdo. Dress him up in clothes for playing cards. And on and on and on it goes. Wouldn't that be something he, see, rather than look inside and resolve here, people don't do that. It's like Hitler, okay? They project it out there. They find someone to blame for their own unrest. We have an unrest by the mere fact that we think we're separated from the oneness. We have our own unrest. So rather than look in here and resolve it, we tend to project it out. The Course in Miracles is full of that stuff, okay? We project it out. We project it out. We project it out. You are an obvious target for him to project out his unrest. How am I doing? All right. Doesn't make you feel any better. <laughs> okay. Actually, but, go ahead. It does make me feel better hearing you say that. Well, I thought I figured it out. We had a conversation once many decades ago. We were walking on the beach, and he said, You know, I really resented you when you came along. And I resented you when we were children tremendously. And I thought, Wow, we're about to have a healing miracle right now on the beach. Uh -huh. But it, there was no follow up. Okay. Um, well, he may still resent you at some level, you know, who knows, okay? But that's not the issue right now. The issue is always your response to it. Oh, yeah. He might not resent me at all anymore. Okay. But it's your response. You've got this Hitler-like Hitler, Hitler -like response underneath all of that. Look out. I'm coming, okay? And, and it, I'm going to have to guess here because I don't know your whole history. But because of all this stuff with your brother... And all the, that, that now creates an anger within inside of you. I'm not loved and I don't like it. My brother is helping me do this. So look out, world, I'm coming. Because I don't know how to resolve it in here. Okay. We march through life and it manifests itself. In your case, cancer. In other cases, other kind of ailments and so on it goes. But the important part of what we just said about your brother is we're trying to understand where he's coming from. It's a step towards true forgiveness. We first need to understand it. Not excuse the behavior. Understand it. Helps to, sof helps to soften it. Okay. Now, there may be other characters in your life I don't know about and so on that have contributed to all this as, as well, but we're going to at least focus where we are on this. No one else to that extent. As far as you know. Correct. Okay. All right. And maybe that's so. I don't know, but, but we're going here. Uh, remind me, when's the last time you talked to your brother? Four years. Four Five. years. Five years, probably okay. five. So there's still some strain there. Yeah, I actually, after working with Sonia that, you know, a couple of months ago, I, I gave him a call. He didn't answer the phone. And I just left a message, you know, not, not real long. And, uh, and I was funny because Lisa was in the room when I did it. And uh, so she played it back when she heard me leaving the message. And I wasn't even completely aware I did it said, hey, man, we haven't talked in a long time. Maybe it'd be good to talk. Um, and maybe we can work some things out uh, if I can stay on the phone long enough. 
And I can't believe I slipped that in. If I can tolerate you long enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you had to get the dig in. <laughs> Holy Moses! I, I didn't even catch it till she pointed it out. Like, oops. Um, so it, apparently that was not a very inviting. Hey, give me a call. Um, yeah. And he did not call. Um, for all I know, he's dead. By the way, he he. Except for my cancer, I've never had health problems. He's had uh, a number of them. Okay. Well, okay. We're still in the reframe stage of all this before we bring an unseen therapist. So I want to ask you another. You bet. Another, another question here. Would I be correct in assuming <laughs> that your brother's one of, if not the main need your brother has would be love? I think so. He, he has not done well with his wives several of them. Yeah. I think he has not felt loved. Uh, yeah. I mean, mom told me that a lot. She said, you know, be nice to your brother. He doesn't feel loved. Okay. And if somebody doesn't feel loved, um, you know, that's a, that's a recipe for conflict inside, which manifests itself in however we can project it out. With me? Yeah. All right. Totally. All right. All right. Let me. It's funny. I have a couple of butterflies in my stomach right now that I didn't have. Um, to my on my conscious level, I am hundred percent positive that you can ask me anything you want. But there's a couple of butterflies down there. That's fascinating right now. Like uh, meaning meaning what? A little nervousness that you're going to ask me something that knocks me off my course, and I'm ready for it. But nonetheless, a little nervousness. Do you but feel ready? I do. No, uh, you, have, you haven't heard my question yet. Okay. Oh, oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> don't okay. say I don't say I do yet. Okay, because I'm going. Okay. Yes, sir. And pause for a moment before you answer this question, because it's easy to answer this academically in a certain way, okay? You got it. Do you feel ready to genuinely let go of every grievance you ever had about your brother? Yes, but I have no idea whether that I can do that. But I yes, it, I, it is nothing but a sea anchor. There's no benefit to it whatsoever. And he hadn't done any unpleasant stuff to me in decades. Okay. All right. That brought tears to my eyes. Well, I got it. And that's a, I'm glad I asked you the question because that's exactly what we're going to try to do with the NC therapy. The point is, we, we know you don't know how to do it. We know that. Okay. Yes, you. Um, no. That's why Unseen Therapist is going to help you. She sees, she sees things, as long as you're open, as long as you're open, she, th she sees things and can use things and can borrow things for you and lend them to you and et cetera, that you're not in touch with. Because you're too, you're too, like me and Lisa and everybody else, we're too involved in our separated, seemingly separated bodies and all those concerns and everything else, including... I'm going to get you. I'm coming for you. Okay. <laughs> and all of that reminds me, I'm coming for you. I'll tell you what's kind of, is I, I have a reframe in my own mind. I, 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 it's not formed well, but let me tell you where I am so far. Instead of I'm coming for you, look out. Okay. I'm coming for you. I hope you're ready for all this love. There's a difference. There's a big difference. Yeah. Yeah. If we can get there, and, and today hopefully it's going to be a start in that direction. If we can get there, hmm, that's therapeutic, I think. All right. Anyway, let's give a shot at an unseen therapist session. And Lisa, can I see your pretty face for a minute? There's, there's, there you are. 
Yeah, you're huh? you you are better you are better looking than Rod. I got to tell you that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be I'm going to be going through this with Rod, okay? But I would like to have you, if you would, join in with us. Close your eyes, etc. But do it surrogately. Imagine yourself being Rod, okay? okay? As best you can. Just as best you just just as though I'm when I'm talking to Rod, I'm talking to you, and I'm talking to. To you, I mean, it's, just, it's as though you were Rod. You bring in unseen therapists. You bring in and do whatever it is that we metaphorically put together in this session, okay? Love is best when shared. So you're going to help us share it. That's the point. Okay. Any uh, question, I, any question I, about it? No. All right. Uh, I have a comment. Please. I'm starting to sweat. <laughs> is, that good like or, is that good or bad? Well, that means maybe something very good is coming. It also means there's some, maybe means there's something you really don't want to let go of. Okay. And that's important to recognize. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Whoa. <laughs> Who am I going to be if I, if I really am love and my, I, I have to live up to my facade, you know, <laughs> think about it. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I'm in from, because I remember back in the mid fifties, I mean, all I wanted to do was to love and be loved. That's all I wanted. And then it didn't work, and I went another path. Okay. And now, all of a sudden, um, I have no interest in, on a conscious level, I have no interest in anything but love. I mean, that's all I do. Um, you know, there's, there's, there's a line, I think, in Ephesians about um, sing spiritual songs and that they are spontaneous. And I just walk along, you know, cancer really, I think I told you, the moment I got diagnosed, which was a shock because 4,000 PSA, total um, metastases and 100 days if you're lucky to live. And uh, as I walked out of the hospital, an audible voice spoke and said, your time has come. The season of love is upon you now. And then I walked down the stairs because they hadn't told me not to do that yet. And my heart opened up. And every single person from the 1950s forward that ever felt love towards me manifested in front of me going down the stairs. And it was two or 300 people. And I was just a, a, a joy-filled mess by the bottom of those stairs in the parking lot. Like, oh my God, 65 years and all these people love me and I never knew it. I didn't know that my wife loved me like that. And and then I'm checking out the parking lot and there's this very sweet mid forties Pakistani immigrant lady. Now I'm not sure what the, the culture is, the Muslim rules, but it, I, I couldn't handle myself. I got out of the car when, when uh, she asked for my ticket and I just hugged her and I said, I'm in love with you. And, and somewhere in the back of my mind, it's like, you shouldn't do that. And instead of being upset, she looked at me and said, you seem like a fine man. I love you too, sir. What? And, and that, that's the day my life really began to change. Well, yes. And those are, those are great feelings. I, I would point out from what you told me there that that is a reflection of needing love from the outside. Yes. Okay. And so here it comes. From, and, and we so look for it. We so want it. And we think it's out there someplace when it does show up and we, buy into it and we accept it oh but what i'm suggesting here is the the real aha in that and correct me if i'm wrong okay the real aha in that is that you accepted it that's an in, that's an inside job yes absolutely i i i still believe i can feel it. not even believe i can feel okay. there's about 20 people in dallas that love me and I can feel it. I mean, intense love. And I mean, I'd go my whole life without feeling that. Okay. Um, and not, not understanding the way we're talking now at all. Um, the love of the unseen therapist to the extent that we can get it from the inside. It's an inside job. She's absolutely. here. She's in here. To the extent we can get the, we are love rather than looking for love. 
There's a big and difference. It out, yeah, it's a great big, oh. it's an academic difference to almost everybody. We want to, we want, well, we want to get to the ownership of it more than you're getting. Okay. Love God, love your neighbor, love yourself. Top two, I got them. Bottom one has proved very difficult for me. Well, yeah, but love yourself. Love yourself is an inside job, okay? Exactly. Okay. <laughs> We're going to try to get the inside job if we can. So anyway, time for unseen therapists. So yes, it's, <clears throat> going to be, it's going to be easy peasy for you because I'm going to narrate the whole thing, Rod, with the instruction that at any time something doesn't fit or you have a question or whatever, feel free to speak up. Okay. All right. So anyway, just close your eyes, close your eyes, take a nice deep, you know, relaxing breath and Lisa, please do the same. <coughs> and you close the eyes. Okay. And now just as a way of inviting unseen therapists, we're going to recall a simple loving moment. And whenever you're there, just nod your head. All right, good. And all we're doing with that, just to remind you, is just we're doing our best to align ourselves with the pure love of the unseen therapist. We're inviting her. Now, she's always guiding us. We're just not listening. We have our own way to go about it. Our ego has its own way, and we have our own views. And, 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 and. But she now knows we're listening. <laughs> That's the purpose. We're going to hand some stuff to you. And we're... We're listening. We're going to allow you to do your thing, unseen therapist. So, okay. So quite often what we do is we aim at specific events, but we're not going to, this particular one is going to be more, it's going to be broader than that. Its purpose is going to do some, be some, some shift of consciousness. It's going to be, it's going to be an attempt at knocking the center, kicking the center out of the anger and all the other inside jobs that keep us from the real love that we need to develop within. That's what it is. And so, Rod, I'm just going to start rambling here because I don't even know where I'm going. I'm going to be guided myself. So whatever, wherever we go, we go. But the first thing that comes up to me is is we want to put, we want to go back in time to when you're a child and there were numerous examples of your brother calling you weirdo, putting you down in various ways, causing you who were just too young to even debate things at that very young ages, a sense of there's something wrong with me. I don't count. I'm not lovable. Something's wrong with me, all that stuff. Just had a flash. Please. When I was 40 Please. years old, I was sitting by myself contemplating whether or not I was going to end my life. And I asked myself why I was even thinking about it. And I answered, there's no love in the world. All right. I did not end my life, obviously, but I, that just flashed. All right. Well, good. So we'll pick up on, we'll pick up on that. Thank you. We'll pick up on that. So even at that young age, even though you may not have used those words, it would be easy to think, ah, there is no love in the world. And of course, very young, very, very young. We don't really understand at that point that the, everybody's trying to get love from outside themselves and from everybody else and, and so on, rather than to develop it within. And so we want to look at what appears, erroneously actually, but appears to be the source of all this <clears throat> anger and unrest, <coughs> and unrest within. And that's your brother. So there you are at a very young age and allow your brother to appear before you. He's a few years older, but at whatever age you want him to appear, that's the right age. Okay. You could even have him appear as an adult if you wanted to. Just He's going to appear in front of you. 
and you're going to see him. An unseen therapist comes to sit beside you. Are you okay? Yeah, there's stuff happening in my body. It's interesting. Okay. Unseen therapist, unseen therapist is sitting beside you, counseling with you. She says, now look at your brother. And I know you've discussed this with Gary some, but your brother, like you, like everyone, like your parents, like everyone you know, really needs love. And your brother thought he was getting it from outside sources, and you seem, at least in his perception, to come along and steal it from him. You're getting attention where he got it before. And he's angry about it, but he's also erroneous about it. He's making a big error because he's looking outside himself for love. That's where he's been looking. And now the outside sources are shifting their love someplace else, seemingly. He's not generating love from within. And the Hitler part of him starts to manifest in its somewhat milder way than Hitler. But you want to look at him as someone who needs love. And the way to do that, says Unseen Therapist, is to imagine him standing in front of you <clears throat> with a metaphorical love sponge within himself. Okay. It's like a water sponge that can fill up with water and then overflow and so on. But this one fills up with love. And his is dry. It's dry. <laughs> and at this moment, his unseen therapist sits beside you and says, see, he's got his dry love sponge. You, Rod, you have a dry love sponge yourself. From within, you keep looking for love from without. We're not criticizing that. That's what you do here in this illusory world. But let me help you first fill up your love sponge, and then we'll work with your brother. So unseen therapist says, just relax a moment now, Rod. And let's fill up your love sponge. And if you want, imagine it like, you know, I, the unseen therapist, have this unlimited love sponge, just like there's unlimited gasoline in a gasoline tank to fill up your car. You put a nozzle inside you someplace, and, ah, oh, the love sponge starts to fill up. It gets more and more, and it's different. It's a different, it isn't the kind of thing that I've got to get it out there someplace. It's coming from within. And this is the unseen therapist who, doesn't give a twit about what we do in this illusionary world. She knows that we are ultimately love and we have dried up our love sponge. So we're going to fill it up. So we fill it up. It's gentle. It goes on at its own pace. And just take a few moments now, or however long it takes Rob, within yourself to let unseen therapist fill up your love sponge from within. You need not do it perfectly. You need, you're not getting a grade of an A or a C or anything for this. Just let her fill it up. And whatever you think is, you've done the best you can, whatever that is, just say something to me and we'll proceed. Take your time. Feeling fear that I can't find the sponge. A fear that you can't find the, you can't fill the sponge or find the sponge. Find it. Oh, you can't find it. Oh, okay. All right. I didn't expect that, but we'll use it. Okay. So, 
All right, so there you are. Can't find the sponge. Unseen therapist says, ah, but Rod, I have the sponge right here. You have it yourself, but you just don't recognize it. So let's, um, let me ask you this as unseen therapist. Does Rod have a sponge in him? Dry as it may be, does he have a sponge in him? That's a question for you. It's a yes or no. For me? Yeah. Does Rod have a sponge in him? In your imagination, does Rod yeah. have a sponge? Okay. All right. Good enough. Close your eyes. Close your eyes. Okay. So if Rod has a sponge in him, maybe we can borrow it from him. Would that work? Borrow it from me? No. You, you can't find your own sponge. Yes. Can you, can you borrow it from Rod? From Rod? I'm sorry, from your brother. Well, the catfish. Let's find out. Well, I got another thought. I got another thought. I got another thought. Go ahead, close the eyes. What's your brother's name? Wade. Wade, okay. So Wade is a love sponge. Wade is a love sponge. I so believe he does. What's that? I believe he does. Okay. All right. But you can recognize in front of you that he's got this love sponge, albeit maybe dry. Okay. All right. You can't find your own, but you can see that he has one. I'm correct in that? Yes. Okay. So Unseen Therapist says, I'll tell you what. You stand by here for a minute, Rod, and watch while I, the Unseen Therapist, fill up Rod's love sponge. Mm -hmm. Now, you're looking at Rod, and as his love sponge fills up. So, well, I get never, confused. Looking at Rod or looking at Wade? I'm sorry, Wade. I'm getting, I'm getting, yeah, you're looking at Wade. Sorry, yeah. I get, I'm getting the words mixed up. I'm good. So Unseen Therapist is now, is now, while you're observing, filling up Wade's love sponge. And as I, she, and as she does... Notice in your own mind's eye, if you can, how his posture softens, how his face and his expressions soften, how his eyes soften. Because here he is, maybe for the first time in his life, really having an interface with love. Understand it's in your imagination and all of that. Yes. Okay. And let me ask you, are you able to see his eyes and face, et cetera, soften? Yes. Okay, good. All right. And so here, here you are without your love sponge, of course. But you're seeing with the love sponge, your brother, Wade, given love, given love, shifts entirely. No longer does he need to get it from you or his parents or from outside sources. He's generating it from within. Very different. Very different. Now, says Unseen Therapist, we're going to do something with your rod, love sponge. And we're going to let Wade. See, one thing nice about a sponge is it gets filled up and then it overflows, but it's always, it's always, now it's always full. And so when it overflows, you can share the overflow all you want, okay? So his is overflowing, and he is sharing it now with you. He's not calling you a weirdo. He's recognizing who you really are at a different level. You're no longer his competitor, how you doing? I'm sweating, man. I like it. All right. He's no longer your competitor. You're no longer his competitor. He's letting go of it. He is softer. He is easier to get along with. And even if he, well, he's just easier to get along with. Now, you may not feel like you have a love sponge within 
But whatever there is within, it can hold love. And here comes Wade's love, sharing it with you. And as you fill up, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you, are you able to let him share it with you? Yes. Okay. Are you, do you have a love sponge now? Oh. Do you have a love sponge now? I don't know, but I, I, I can It's weird. I can feel him sharing it with me, but I, I'm still not feeling it inside me. Well, but, you don't have to. We're imagining all this. If you feel oh, it, great. Oh. If you feel it, great. If you feel it. I feel he's actually sh sharing love water with me. Okay. All right. So. The important thing about this is as you fill up with love, your anger, the lookout I'm coming, starts to soften. It has less reason to be. Do you need to have your eyes open? No. Okay. As you fill up, the lookout I'm coming starts to shift. Look out, I'm full of love. Are you ready? Look out, I'm full of love. Are you ready? An unseen therapist says, now let's do something else, Ron. Let's take this anger that you have the Hitler part that you've admitted to and that we, that every separated person seems to have. Let's take the Hitler part of you. And it's still there within you someplace. And she's saying, Rod, give me a description of it. Is it a, is it a black ball? Is it a, Ugly tree. What, what does it seem like to you, metaphorically? Exactly like that guy in the Rambo movie. Well, I forgot which one that is. A Sylvester Stallone. Well, I know that, but... Oh, it seems like Sylvester Stallone. Oh, okay. Yeah, like in the first Rambo movie where he, that southern cop picks him up, puts him in jail, he just explodes and okay. boom. All right, all right. So you got Rambo in there. Yeah, you got Rambo in there. One of the things about Rambo. Close your eyes. Anger, skill. Well, yes. Violence, and he was wounded. He was hurt by these people. Yes. And he just wanted to leave, and they pursued him. Yes. And as that movie ends, he ends up, you know, machine gunning everything in sight and blowing things up because of, because of all of his anger. Yes. In later Rambo movies, however, while he's still the angry warrior, there's a softer side to him. He's protecting people. He's saving people. He's doing a lot of things that are very gentle in that in that sense there is within him both parts there is the warrior rambo and there's the gentle rambo do you recognize that i didn't see the other movies but i understand exactly what you're talking about i feel it all the time in there okay all right but anyway anyway so let's get back to rambo so there's rambo rambo who has been conditioned to be the warrior conditioned for violence, conditioned to see the enemy and do it. I'm coming. It's a sort of a Rambo thing. I'm coming for you. All right. Yeah. That's even a quote. He says, you know, to the guy who was orchestrating all this, I'm coming for you. That's a quote. Okay. Unseen therapist says, ah, that's within you. There it is. There it is. But also within you is all the love. 
So let's take the Rambo and let's put him outside of you and let him float around out there. That's the Rambo within you, not the, not the Rambo that's in a movie because the movie doesn't change. Okay. That's the Rambo inside of you. And let me ask you, which is more powerful, the love inside you or the Rambo inside of you? Hmm. I prefer the love and I'm very weak now, so I'd be kind of a joke as a Rambo. So I'm kind of adding a little bit of temporal dimension to this question. I wanted it to be the love, but I just couldn't trust it. And so Rambo won out with me repressing the, okay. the, the black hat, but not the white hat aspect. You know, just trying to help people, and, but uh, volunteering to behave, you know. Well, I just had an instance that once I was in a little bookstore and there was a 75 year old lady um, and two guys came in, they didn't see me and they were robbing her. And I just sat there figured out what the timing was to take them both out. And then I did one of the strangest things I've ever done in my life. You know, they have those chairs in the bookstores. And so I, there was a chair right around the corner. If they turned around, they could see me. So I stood on the chair and instead of taking them out and calling the police, I began to sing a love song to them. And they turned around with strange expressions and they, they obviously did not shoot me. And they just stared. Then they looked at each other and then they stared. Then they looked at the old lady and then they just looked at each other and they walked out. No violence at all. It was a love song. Isn't that an example of love being more powerful than Rambo? Yes. I mean, I could have killed him, but I didn't want to. Yeah. All right. Nice story. Great story. Great story. But it's an example of love being more powerful. Yes. Yes. That's right. Okay, and that's where we're getting to. Now, I can hear the conflict going on. There is the Rambo in there. Now there's the love in there. And the two, we're trying to get them so they can't coexist. We want the love to take take everything over because the Rambo does nothing for you, as you know. Okay. Nonetheless, nonetheless, it's in there. It seems to serve a purpose. It seems to give you protection because if you can conquer the world out there, it can't get you. Okay. How'd I do with that one? True. All right. But conquering the world is an illusion to begin with. Okay. (laughs) And the only way you're going to, as long as you try to conquer the world, it's going to conquer you because it's going to create cancer and all, all kinds of stuff within you. But if you see it with love, genuinely replace it Rambo with love. What is what cause would there be for cancer? I I don't know. Well, I can't think of one either. And neither can unseen therapists, by the way. So at any rate. Unseen therapist says, okay, let's take a look at the Rambo part of you. And let's put the Rambo right next to a cloud of love. Both of those are inside you. We're going to move them outside now. You have this cloud of love on one side and Rambo on the other with his warrior-like protect the world get rid of the bad guys kind of thing. And the love cloud said, "Ah, there are no bad guys. There are only people trying to look out for themselves in their own way. Not all, (laughs) not all of us excusable behavior. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Um, But nonetheless, that's what they're doing. And so spend a little time now looking at the cloud 
and letting the cloud move towards Rambo, you know, with his knife, you know, and the bow and arrow and all the stuff that Rambo has. I start to move towards Rambo and make the cloud envelop Rambo. And there he is, Sylvester Stallone with that, all that warrior stuff and those big muscles and all of that. He softens. Just like my brother did. Yeah, he softens. Okay. He's understanding. He's understanding the power of love. Nobody's ever told him this before. He's been a trained assassin. He's been a trained warrior. He's been a trained wrecking machine and he's good at it just like you're good at it okay he's really good at it but love if he will allow it will soften him and he can retire from all his warrior like activities yes and be filled with love Spend some time, if you can, being Rambo and letting this cloud come over you with unseen therapist's help, shifting. In fact, let's do it. We're going to do it this way. Imagine yourself as Rambo, okay? And we're going to imagine Rambo vibrating with all of his anger and pent up stuff. Okay. The ta 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 like that. Okay. It just keeps vibrating. And that's you. Okay. And you're vibrating with all of this stuff. And here comes the loving cloud, the unseen therapist, enveloping you in this loving cloud. And within this loving cloud, all this vibration cannot survive. The da 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 goes da 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 and I found myself, I, I, I often walk down the middle of the street. I mean, I'm aware right now of the front of the street, the backyard. I don't know how I have it, but I have this penetrating perception that doesn't seem to be limited. And it's like, oh, my God, just now when you did the first thing, it was like, how am I going to protect myself? How am I going to protect myself? That's what was going on in me. Okay. Yeah, because but the because I the, believe you said the exact right thing, and I had a vision of it, but I was just so dang scared that if I turned to love, I couldn't protect myself, but she can protect me. That was the vision, but I was still scared. Okay, got it. Really good feedback. Really good feedback because that what's that saying is the Rambo and you needs to be there for, I'm presuming protection of some kind. Okay. You've got to go on the offense. If you don't go on the offense out there, oh. you know, the other side's going to get to you. Okay. And all of that, all of which is a fiction, of course. That's not to say it's not an, it's not a safe world because there's a lot of unsafe things in it, but we're trying to get to a little different point here. That's why we need to do this more than once. Okay, so this, let's go through this metaphor again. There you are. You are Rambo. You are protecting yourself. You think you need to protect yourself, okay? So does everybody else. Right? You think you need to protect yourself. Here comes the love, the vibration, the da-da-da-da-da-da-da. goes ta 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 And this protection... Fades down to something which is of, let's call it, normal concern. For example, you're not going to, after all of this, go off and kiss a rattlesnake. 
Okay, you have normal concern. Okay, <laughs> you're not going to walk down a a dark street at night. You know, when who knows what is going to be in this dark alley or something like that. You're not going to do something stupid. You're going to have normal concern for safety. But we're looking at here is the over the top stuff. The over the top stuff is excess. Are you with me? Um, I think so. Um, but not quite sure right now. Um, and I get a little confused between now and the last 70 years. I used to walk down the dark alleys on purpose, um, but I would much rather not. And um, I mean, whenever I've been able to express love to another person, like even now when I sing love songs on the sidewalk, all the pain's gone. Everything's gone. I'm fine. I don't even feel like me. I just right. feel like an instrument to sing. Right. But boy, I got scared when you, right. you know, it's like I'm looking at Rambo right now and he is really kind of doing what you said with this cloud around him. For some reason, I have no idea. I'm afraid, which is a form of resistance. I, I, yeah, I can't. Of course. Yeah, Thank of you. course. Of course. And we don't expect... 70 years of self-protection and fears and I'm, gonna, I'm coming for you and so on to go away just because a cloud comes over Rambo once. All right. May take some repetition. That's the point. So let's do a little repetition and see what happens. Okay. So there you are. You're Rambo. You have all those protective mechanisms. You're good at it. Yeah, you have 70 years experience and so on. But you're also over the top. That movie, that's a movie, okay? It's an over the top kind of thing. It's a, it's a movie, all right? Um, and whether there may be pieces of wars and stuff like that with, within it, it's still a movie. But there's the Rambo in you. And the Rambo is over the top. It is experiencing excess need to protect. Here comes the loving cloud. Ta-ta, 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 ta-ta. And also built within this Rambo is your fear. And we're going to address the fear now. And the purpose is to take the over-the-top fear down to normal concern, which is healthy in that way. So again, we're going to have the vibration, but this time it's going to be about the normal fear, or about the fear, the excess fear. The ta-ta-ta-ta-ta, ta, 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 here comes the loving cloud, and the fear, ta-ta, 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 ta-ta. And another time, here's the, your Rambo, but you also, oh, we got to keep Rambo. We got to keep him. I'm coming for you. I've got to do this, I think. Maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe not so much. Here comes the loving cloud. Ta-ta, 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 ta-ta. Give me a little feedback. Rod, is the fear still the same? Is it dwindling or getting worse? What? I'm not sure. It, it, it's vibrating like crazy, but maybe, I think a little better, but it's, it's, I'm not used to feeling quite like this, so. Okay, well, let's do it another time. Here is this fear. This fear, I've got to be able to protect myself. And by the way, this is Unseen Therapist, just so you are clear, Rod, you're not Rambo, okay? You don't have his muscles. You don't have his vibrant body. You don't have all of his training. You're nowhere near as good with a knife. Maybe you are, okay, as he seems to be. You can't really expect to take on a whole army of people uh, and conquer everything and blow up a whole city and everything else, okay? Fair um, enough. All right. <clears throat> 
you're, you're going to be left with what's with Rod in his body, okay, for protection. <laughs> you're not really Rambo, just like you're not Superman either, okay? You don't fly and jump over top buildings or high buildings and all that stuff, okay? You are Rod with normal concerns, with common sense protections, and so on. But you seem to think you need to be Rambo, okay? So, and you got a fear if Rambo isn't there to protect you. So, ta 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 ta, here comes the fear, you know, here's the cloud, da da ta 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 ta, come on, come on, Rodbo. <laughs> Rodbo, is that, did I say that right, Rodbo? <laughs> we, don't really need, <laughs> we don't really need to do all that, Rodbo, okay? But why don't we just be Rod for a little while, okay? Yeah, you can get irritated at some people, whatever. That's sort of normal kind of stuff. But Wade, Wade, there's your key. There's your key to release. Whether or not Wade cooperates with this, what's really important is what you do with Wade. Can you leave him be? He is a source. He is a reason for Rambo to be there. Rodbo to be there. He's a source for that. And so now we're going to put Wade in with Rambo and your fear. We're going to add all that up together. Ta-ta, 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 ta-ta. And here comes the cloud. Unseen therapist. It need not be. Ta-ta, ta-ta. And now let's finish up, Rod, with more of what we just did. In your own mind, put together Wade, Rodbo, whoever you want. The ta 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 ta. Bring an unseen therapist and all the fear, and repeat it again, and again if you want, and again if you want, until you've gone as far as you think you can go at this round, at this level. And then open your eyes and we'll talk. I think, okay. Are you still sweating? Yeah. Um, well, I can see Wade filled with love. Never saw that before. I can see Rambo filled with love. Never even looked for that before. And then Rodbo, it, 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 it's, the structure is weaker than it was 30 minutes ago. It's there, as near as I can tell. But okay. what I had was the beginning of a strong belief. If, 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 if Wade and Rambo can fill the sponge up, so can I. But, well, I, and then I just sort of seemed like I didn't get any farther. Okay. All right. Now, this is my experience. 
this kind of unseen therapist session we just did where I ramble on and we're trying to kick the center out of things and shift things and reframe and all of that, which is what that was about, is the kind of thing, and that's one reason we recorded this, because I'm going to send you the recording, for you to go over that, you know, fast forward if you want, but go to this, this unseen therapist session um, and run it again and again and again. And I think the more you run it, the deeper the benefits become. And I suspect that you will, it will start triggering other things. Oh, forgot about that. We can, something to work on. Forgot about that. Something to work on. Da, 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 da. It, it will be a launching pad for other stuff. That's my guess anyway. Comment? Um, um, that, that's, I mean, a, that's an all oh man. I'm out, of, I'm out of wisdom today, Rod. Well, I, I have like three things. One, Immense gratitude. I, I was really surprised that I started to get scared. Um, and I knew that was the track. And so I'm not about to run, but um, two, um, I've never seen anybody simply clearly and in a way that didn't intimidate me move into my space as much as you just did assisting the unclean therapist. And my thought is, God, where were you when I was six years old? Um, <laughs> where was I when I was six years old? <laughs> um, so, um, I mean, I just feel like something amazing is happening. Oh, will we be able to do this again? Uh, I want to see what happens. And I'll talk to Sonia about this some as well, okay? But I wanna see what happens as you do this a few times. Which I will. Okay. Now, I'm tired of looking at you. Can I see the, the, beautiful, the beautiful wife for a moment? And then I have a question while you're looking at my very beautiful wife. <laughs> uh, you have a tendency to go, and I say this lovingly, and I'm very grateful. You go for the juggler. I mean, you go for the meat. Yeah. And, um, and I mean, I can't believe that I'm sitting here sweating. And when I watched the cloud around Rambo, I got even more scared because I saw the possibility. And it was like, oh, my God, I'm pretty sure that I'd rather have love than guns. If in a dangerous situation, and I sort of remember a scenario, another guy mugged me, I disarmed him, I took him to lunch. Um, he was not a bad kid. Um, and the love, oh my, the love that I felt enveloping Wade and Rambo and, and kind of Rodbo, that's it. You know, I've been looking for that since the mid-1950s. Okay. Well, it will take, it will take more repetitions of that to have it sink. Okay. Yeah. Because you just got exposed to it, what happened. You got exposed to it. Oh, yeah. Now, there needs to be some sinking going in. So anyway, let me turn to your wife, Lisa. What was your experience and all that? Were you able to do follow along okay with that? I yes, uh, yes, definitely. And um, you know, I've, I was trying to feel like, am I doing this right in terms of being a surrogate? Um, so I sort of had to let go of that. Um yeah. but I felt in terms of the sponge, I could feel it right away. And it was just interesting because I felt like my thin body was becoming plump and, you know, filled out um, as a love sponge, you know, as the love poured in. But then it switched to just filling up the cells from the toes all the way up to just filling up each cell that was dry just filling it up with love and um and with the ram with rambo and wade um when you said put them all together i experienced um oh and i also with the love experienced uh relaxing 
like just relaxing, um, a rest. And with Rambo and Wade, we were, and, my, and Rod as myself, we were three young children together holding hands in a circle outside and uh, just being with each other <clears throat> all the same age and, and not doing anything to each other, you know, to hurt each other but just being with each other, holding hands in a little circle. So. Well, good, good, good. Okay. Um, so let's close this up, but let me ask you something. I, I suspect that parts of what we did, maybe even most of what we did, would be very useful for other people because I really haven't gotten down into the deep, deep, deep anger with people like we did here with you, um, would you have any problem if I shared this with other students? Yeah, I probably would do it though. All right, well, all right. So spend some time with the recording. I'll give it, I'll send it to you soon today um, and then get back to me. Um, Thank you so, so much, Gary. Uh, like, okay. do this for like a week, every single day for an hour and then let you know maybe a week later or what? Yeah, something like that. You have to go at your own pace. You mm -hmm. may want to do it twice a day. I depends on your, you know. It takes, it, it, take, it takes energy to do this. Okay, so you have to, you have to uh, pace yourself. But I, I would keep going until you've maybe gotten bored with it, hit a wall, got out of it, whatever you're going to get out of it, you know, and it's time to go to step two. This has been an You're amazing, amazing experience. I, right. I would not have been able to predict what just happened. Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> well, we'll hear from you. See you guys later, huh? Bye. Thank you. Bye.